listing all the wonderful and remarkable cars that Lancia have made over the years. But let's not forget, Porsche has also made some rather remarkable cars. Absolutely. There was the 911. There was another sort of 911. <laughs> there was a slightly different 911 that was green. Yes, 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 I know. But this year marks the 50th anniversary of what I think must be the greatest Porsche of them all. Is it a 911? No. It's called the Porsche 917. And even if you have no interest in motorsport, you'll most likely recognize this machine because it's quite possibly the most iconic racing car ever created. The first thing you need to know is that although the 917 looks like a big, wide car, actually, it isn't. Ow. I'm in. God, it's tiny. successful car maker ever to race a Le Mans. They have 19 victories to their name. But this is the car that started it all. This is the car that gave them that all-important first win. Forward. The following year at Le Mans, way to another crushing victory, it would go to the speed traps at over 241 miles an hour, a record that stood for more than 20 years. And in that same race, it was so fast, it would cover a total of 3,350 miles, a distance record that would stand until 20.
just astonishing. Imagine this for a 24-hour race. Even though it's a 50-year-old car, the 917 is fast by the standards of any decade. 0 to 60, 2.7 seconds. Top speed, 224 miles an hour. And it was built without compromise using the absolute bare minimum of materials. So, for example, this bodywork, which is very close to my head, it's fiberglass, 1.2 millimeters thick. That's it. Now, in front of me, I have a big rev counter, an oil temperature gauge, and an oil pressure gauge. That's all the information you get. If those are reading correctly, that means the engine isn't going to blow up. And that means you can pin it! Here we go. The 5-litre 12-cylinder engine produces 621 horsepower, which is modest by the standards of today's road-going hypercars. But this thing weighs just 800 kilograms. As a result, the power to weight is off the scale! Bloody hell, this is special. What's more amazing than that, actually, is that this car exists at all, because its gestation was, let's say, it was quite difficult. The story of its birth starts in 1968, when the governing body for sports car racing, alarmed that the top-end unregulated prototype cars were becoming too fast, too expensive and too dangerous, decreed that such machines should have engines no larger than three litres. However, the governing body also said that if you could build 25 road-going versions of your racing car, that engine limit would be raised to five litres, although secretly they knew that no small sports car manufacturer could actually afford to do that. They didn't think there'd be any takers. The ragtag Porsche team just made the deadline, and the motorsport inspectors gave the road cars the sign-off presumably not inspecting them too closely, or they would have noticed that most of them had truck axles. Pierre hoped for a big win at the 1969 Le Mans race, but it was a disaster. One of the privately entered cars crashed on lap one, killing its driver. The others broke down as the race wore on, until just one remained driven by this man, British driver Dickie Atwood. Difficult would be uh, putting it mildly. Um, 
life-threatening could be another one. Um, right. It was um, a monster. It was made for speed, like a bullet to go through the air, but the, uh, there wasn't enough pressure on the bodywork to keep it on the ground. And now, since the legend is celebrating its 50th birthday, I think it deserves a fun day out. So I thought, why don't we put Mr. Dicky Atwood back in it to stretch its legs a bit and spice things up. And whilst he's there, let's see how the old legend, I mean the car, stacks up against a modern Porsche. Specifically this Porsche, the 911 GT2 RS. The biggest gun in Porsche's current arsenal. Now, attentive viewers will have noticed that I'm not actually driving, and that's because I've decided to do this properly. We're going to have old Porsche Le Mans winning racing driver versus young Porsche Le Mans winning racing driver, because this is Neil Yarny, and he won for Porsche in 2016 in the 919. To be honest, he's also probably a bit better at this than I am. Get him away! I have been clever. So, so you see, James, some old men can drive fast. Just saying. <laughs>